Morning. Good morning and uh, welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am uh, Krista Burns, your host here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is a library commission's weekly online event where we cover commission history, anything that we have interest in Nebraska librarians. We do these sessions every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, and we do a mixture of presentations, interviews, book reviews, anything we can come interest. Um, and today we have our, um, today's session is our Tech Talk with Michael Sowers, the Library Commission's Technology Innovation Librarian, sitting next to me here. Um, he does them about monthly, updates on any new interesting techie things that are out there, and he can answer your questions about any sort of tech-related things. Um, and this morning we have an interview that he's going to be doing with for us, a last minute thing, <laughs> but we're glad, happy to have it. And so I'm going to now turn it over to Michael to do his thing. Great. Thanks, Krista. Um, as Krista said, I'm Michael Sowers. I'm the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Commission. And uh, as part of these Tech Talks, what I've, I've been so far successful in doing, although it, I, I was almost unsuccessful this month, is finding someone I think is uh, inter interesting to interview about technology uh, related to libraries. And this month, we have Tim Spaulding, who is the founder and uh, person in charge of librarything.com and let me um, un unmute him here because I lost him. Where'd he go? Krista, can you unmute him? Tim, Tim, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, thanks for joining us. I, I know you're really busy. Um, if, I'm going to let Tim kind of take control and give you a tour of Library Thing in just a minute here, but I was wondering Tim, if you could just maybe introduce yourself and give us a little bit of your background uh, for the audience. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not a librarian. Uh, I was a scholar. Uh, ultimately, I'm a failed scholar. I dropped out of uh, graduate school for Greek and Latin. And, uh, you know, I was a, a very bookish uh, youth and uh, a bookish adult as well. And I started Library Thing really as a way to, to catalog my own personal library. And uh, it became something more than that something like a career. So uh, Library Thing is now a company. We've got um, 10 people, three of them librarians, but um, as I said, I'm not one. Okay, well, I, I promise uh, not to hold that against you. Um, I've, I've met Tim, just full disclosure, I've met Tim several times. He's a really wonderful guy. Got to know, yeah, Chris has gotten to, gotten to know him too. Um, so Tim, I'm going to go ahead and give you presentation control there. Great. Oh, sorry. Hold on. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I just clicked the button marked not yet. Can you do it again? Oh, okay. Let's. <laughs> let's. Uh, it, it was the blue one. Okay. Give me a sec here. We see. I seem to have lost something on my screen. This is this is the technology uh, show here, everyone. So, oh, he's on your staff. Yes. There we go. Um. Change presenter, why is he not listed in my presenter list? Because he is the presenter right now. Oh, okay. I think you are the presenter. Oh, okay. Can you can people see my screen now? No. Uh, okay, give me a sec here. Let me uh I'm going to Hang on. Back to you, I thought. Yeah, it's back to us. I gave it back to you. Okay, now let's oh, I see. I'm the presenter. There we go. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Okay. Try now. There we go. Okay. I work with computers. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> Expert in this stuff, yeah. So, so Tim, why don't you just take a little bit and give us a, a tour of Library Thing for us? Sure thing. So, Library Thing, um, as I said, grew out of my desire to catalog my own books, something that I've been doing uh, much of my life, and it really grew from there. And the the basic idea is that if if many people catalog their books in one place, in some sense they catalog together. So uh, I've come up with a concept called social cataloging and um, it really drives everything that Library Thing does. Uh, it, it, I, I talk about a, so, a ladder of social cataloging and this is a ladder that you ascend as you use the site. It's a ladder that the site itself has ascended um, and it starts at the bottom with personal ca cataloging and ends with a much more complicated thing like true collaboration. So I'm just going to put that up briefly, and I, I'll probably mention some rungs along this ladder. But just to get the sense that um, 
you know, there are people who only use the site to list the books that they're reading or the books that are in their personal library. And there are people who do, um, you know, true collaboration with other people around bookish topics. So just to start off, uh, anyone can go to library thing. Um, until you've got a lot of books, it's completely free. After that, it's pretty cheap. Um, you just go, you, you create a, a membership. Um, I'm already a member, so I'll just type in my name here. And it brings me to this screen that's got a million things going on on it. Um, but when you really come down to it, the core of library thing is probably this screen, adding books to your library. People tend to spend, I don't know, maybe a third of their time on library thing just on here. So, you know, I take a book. Sorry? That would be us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So you type in a book, like I just typed in Huckleberry Finn, and lots of different editions appear on the right. If I were to specify an author or a publisher or, or an ISBN, um, I could narrow it down more, more. Library thing is unique among the sites that do this because we search library sources as well as Amazon, which is the current source. So we search 690 libraries around the world, and um, uh, probably a majority are in the United States, but lots and lots of libraries around the world. So it's really good for, for everything. Now let me see if there's anything in Nebraska. I don't even know. There we go. University of Nebraska. So. Yeah. I can add that to my list of libraries. And when I search for Huckleberry Finn, I'll search uh, the University of Nebraska's uh, collection. It might be slow. Anyway, you can, you can add books from all these libraries. And library thing consumes Mark Records and uh, tries to, to, to do justice by the quality of that data. So yeah, here you see uh, items in the, in the University of Nebraska. OK. Once you've done that, you get something like this. So this is my library at present. And you know it looks kind of like Excel. You've got cover, you've got title, you've got author, date, tags, which are these free form subject headings that I add myself. I can rate a book. This is actually a really good book, so I'll give it a five stars. Publication, right? Uh, as I mentioned, library thing gets into the library data quite deeply. So we have LC classification, Dewey, LCSH. Um, when I switch here to style C, you can see library thing is doing some things that are a little bit more unexpected. This isn't a good example, but you can see things like series, important places, awards and honors, uh, things that don't normally appear in a library catalog are somehow appearing in library thing, and I'll, I'll show you how. Um, <coughs> one of the best ways to look at the library is when you click the, the covers button, as I just did. And this shows your library uh, as if it were sitting on a shelf as, as a set of covers. Of course, no one actually faces their books out like this. But if, you, if they're faced out like this, it's, it's really easy to look at somebody and just get a quick sense of the kind of person that they are. Um, library thing is, is really equivalent to going to someone's house and, and crooking your neck to see the books that they have. Um, you do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, so... Uh, now, Tim, have you read all these books? <laughs> well, you know, I've read a lot of them. Uh, you know, I, I have a lot of nonfiction, and one doesn't consume nonfiction quite the same way. That would be my... Very, very true. <laughs> um, anyway, so, uh, so here's my profile, and uh, I think two things should strike you about this. Um, uh, one is that, um, that I'm better looking looking in this photo than I am in the photo that Michael uh, selected. <laughs> um, but uh, no, the, the thing that should strike you is that this looks like a, a standard social networking profile. You've got you know, pictures of me, you've got information about me, sites that I'm on, where I am, right? All the information is voluntary, but you know, this resembles Facebook or whatever. What, what I think is equally what? striking here is that, I'm going to blow it up here, Library thing puts a lot of emphasis on this area here, members with your books, okay? Now we have the familiar concept of friends, right? But a lot of the interaction on the library thing is going on with people who have your books. And the idea is, you know, this person shares 53 books with me. Even if I'm not a friend of his, and actually I am in this case, um, you know, we share something that's, that's pretty cool. So a lot of these people, like this guy here, I share 59 books with. Um, looking at his library, talking to him, 
uh, seeing what sort of books he recommends, all that becomes immediately interesting to me. Um, and library thing is always trying to do something more than, than mere social networking. It's, it's about your friends if you want it to be, but it's, it's about what you love uh, uh, most of all. So, um, so yeah. Here's a feature called uh, Connections where I can, I can keep up with my friends and uh, other people who aren't my friends, looking at what they've reviewed recently, what they've added to their, to their wish list and so forth. So I can keep up with it like that. Library thing has an extensive social section of the site. Uh, there's a groups thing, a groups section here. The the largest li group on library thing is librarians who library thing, which is um, coming up with some, some things like 6,000 people, uh, which is still only uh, less than a percentage of the site. But but a lot of uh, a lot of librarians on the site. Uh, we have a lot of you know, people who like us. You can see here in the talk section. Uh, these are all messages that I've been involved in one way or another, groups that I belong to, uh, posts that I've made. But again, there's a section here called Your Books. And when I click on Your Books, it tells me all the conversations that are going on about books in my library. Uh, because there's a way when you're, when, you're, when you're having a conversation, you indicate what books are mentioned. So, you know, these are conversations going on about my books, even if I don't know these people or I'm not in this group. The you know, library thing is giving you an in based upon the, the shared data. So we also have an extensive local area that I invite you to explore. We've got more than 50,000 bookstores and libraries marked um, uh, on a map. You can find out what's near them. You can find out events that are going on. Uh, here is an example, one of my favorite libraries, the Boston Athenaeum. Find out the other people who love this place. Find out the events that are going on there. Um, we also have an iPhone application for this. It's, it's really cool when you when you go to a new city. It's a cool way to discover it. Anyway, so here is uh, an example of, of what library thing produces when everyone works together. So there's 45,000 people who have Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And I can see over here people who've added it recently, my friends, employees, um, all sorts of other people. You can see a section i blow this up for you, but you can see a section here of tags. Uh, library thing has over 63 million tags added by members. That's an enormous amount of, of tags, um, far more than anyone's ever uh, assembled for books. And the result here is, is a tag cloud that pretty much describes um, this book. If you don't know what tag clouds are, the, the idea is that the more times a, a word is used or a tag is used, the larger it is. So uh, I'll show numbers here. Uh, young adult is used almost a thousand times. Fantasy is used five thousand times, and so on. If I, if I were to show all of these, it'd probably be about a hundred thousand tags. I won't do that. Um, you can also see, you know, all these people together have made tags, but through the logic of, of algorithms, they've also made recommendations. So library thing has determined that people who like Harry Potter also like these books here. And we find these are um, pretty good recommendations. We also let members make their own hand recommendations, you know, reader's advisory or hand selling. We have a cool feature called Will You Like It, which uh, tries to determine if you'll like it. We, we like to do things that Amazon would never do. You know, you'd never, Amazon would never have a button that tells you you probably will not like a book. <laughs> that's something we try to do. Lots of reviews. So all these people working together have created something pretty cool. Here's a section called Common Knowledge. Members enter data about the book. So what are the, what are the characters in it? What are the important places? Uh, what's the dedication? First words. The last words. I've spoiled it for you. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, all, all, of this, uh, all of this stuff entered by members. The Common Knowledge System is about to hit 2 million edits for members and has created you know, one of the richest sources of book data out there. Um, all of which was very consciously chosen to not be things that libraries know because we don't want to duplicate effort. But you know, libraries don't, don't, don't keep track of you know, characters and places. So I am very passionate about tags. I'll only speak to you about them for a few minutes, but um, there's a whole talk up on uh, Vimeo and YouTube about, about tagging. We'll go on for almost an hour about it. 
Tim, Tim, if I could interrupt you with a quick question. Yeah. Um, do I have to create an account to, to get access to all this data? Well, no, certainly not. If you, if you want to, you know, library thing is a very good tool for reader's advisory. You know, someone comes into the library and they say, you know, I just finished Harry Potter. What else should I read? And obviously that's an easy one, but, um, but you know, very obscure books will have, will have pretty good recommendations. One of my but favorite. Without an account, someone could see those recommendations. You can see everything on the site. That's right. Cool. You won't get to add them to your library. You won't get to have friends, but you can see all of the data. You know, so here's a really obscure academic book about Alexander the Great, and it's still got 114 people and very good recommendations. So, um, yeah. Uh, you know, I recommend you join it. I mean, there's, there's no downside. We, we're, we're sort of a pre-Facebook style site in that we, uh, we don't require anything of members. You, you, can, you can refuse to give us your email. You can make your account entirely private. Um, and uh, you have very strict control over where your data goes. But, um, but so I encourage you, you know, make an account and play with it. So briefly, can I, can I jump onto tags? Is that cool? Go, go right ahead. Thanks. So tags are, are just this wonderful thing that Library Thing has assembled. It, you've probably heard of tagging before. And I would encourage you to just throw out everything you've heard about tagging. Uh, most of the things that are told to librarians about tagging are based upon Flickr, Delicious, a few other sites like that. Book tagging ends up looking very different. And you know, with respect, it is more like, it is more like what, what librarians should be interested in. You know, book tagging is seriously interesting in a way that I think uh, Flickr image tagging shouldn't necessarily be to, to most librarians. Um, Library thing is 63 million tags. We add more tags every day than the largest library tagging project uh, add, has added in five years. Um, that's the University of Pennsylvania. So it's really a, a remarkable resource. In this case, cooking, it's just a, a popularity contest. But you will notice, of course, that the tag is not cookery, because uh, people use the word that comes to them naturally rather than some unusual word. Uh, you know, cookery is the, is the library contest. <coughs> Here is, the, here is the cookery uh, tag on library thing. And I, I can't figure out who would tag something cookery unless they're a librarian. So I think these are probably yeah. things that librarians do. <laughs> librarian and cataloger, probably. They're the only people that know exactly, it. Right. Work, yes. <laughs> so here's, here's a good example of where, chick, of where tags work. Uh, this is the chicklet tag. And you know, this is the chicklet reading list. Um, you know, it's got all the, the top stuff. It's sorted by relevance, which is something that subject headings don't do. You know, everything that is a man-woman relationship uh, in, in Library of Congress subject headings is a man-woman relationship equally. Whereas with tags, you can look at statistics and decide, you know, Bridget Jones's diary is a really, really good example of chick lit, but, you know, way, way down the list here, there are things that are much less good examples of it. Um, if you don't like chick, chick lit, here's cyberpunk. Uh, you know, a classic example here would be something like Neuromancer, which uh, has completely bizarre subject headings. Um, I think one of them is, is um, information superhighway fiction, which is you know, a completely dated term. Uh, another one, my, fa my favorite is uh, nervous system wounds and injuries fiction. Um, but there's no, but there's no cyberpunk. Uh, there isn't even science fiction. Uh, um, and you know, for people who care about that, and there's people who practically only read cyberpunk, um, tags are just a wonderful way of uh, getting to it. Paranormal romance is another great example. You know, there are people out there who only read paranormal romance. You know, and I would say that, you know, with being used almost 50,000 times, with the top books having hundreds of examples, you know, this is a really solid defensible subject or genre. And uh, um, you know, it's great to have a way to capture that. You can see in this one here, France, World War II fiction, that when you add tags together, you can get some of the benefits of a structured subject system, right? If you look down here on the right, you'll see some of the related subjects. Library thing is always tying the, the library thing data to the, to the library data. And you know the, the subject, you know, LCSH is great because it, it's hierarchical and can get into great detail. Uh, well, you get some of that value by adding tags together in what library thing calls a tag mash. 
So here's a book, uh, some random Star Wars book that uh, you probably have not read, and I certainly have not read. Members have added the information down here. It's probably going too quickly here. Um, you know, members have added that this belongs in the Star Wars series, the Lando Calrissian Adventure series, and the Star Wars Rise of Empire series. That boils down to something like this, which is uh, 610 Star Wars works, right? All of these uh, books have been rated as part of the Star Wars series. If you look over here on the right, you can see 107 related series. Rise of the Empire, Clone Wars, blah, 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 right? This is more good information about how the Star Wars books fit together than, you know, any library has any ass ever assembled than any librarian that I know has in their head, right? And I would argue that's a good thing, right? Um, that uh, the guys who really know Star Wars are the guys who are editing library thing at 3 a.m. in their underwear, and that isn't necessarily something that's, um, that libraries uh, should, should, should try to be the experts in. Uh, so this might be a case where, where uh, you know, libraries can learn something from, from regular people, not always. Uh, by the way, all this data is, is completely uh, free. It's, it's a Creative Commons attribution license. Um, so um, it's all completely free. Amazingly, uh, nobody uses it at the moment, which is a shame. Um, so one of the cool things that Library Thing does is just get people involved in different projects. Um, Library Thing has harnessed the power of book love like all get out. Um, we attract a lot of really nerdy book people. We attract a lot of catalogers. So at some point, I proposed that we catalog Thomas Jefferson's library. Um, it had been cataloged before in, in book form. But I figured, well, why don't, we, why don't we try to make an online catalog of it? And you know, then we can see the books that we share. So you know, I, can, I share 57 books with Jefferson, because I got a lot of Greek and Latin, and, and so does he. Um, and Library Thing members made very short work of this. It was a couple of days. We then proceeded to do things like, oops, like John Adams, um, uh, which is great because John Adams uh, shares the most books with, with Jefferson. There's a, a great shared worldview there. We did uh, Ernest Hemingway, Sylvia Plath, Tupac Shakur, the famous rapper. Um, We've done over 150, we call them famous dead people's libraries. And uh, all of it's been done by members working from a variety of sources. Uh, sometimes they're printed sources, sometimes they're archival sources. Uh, in a number of cases, they've been original works of research. Um, a librarian in, in Massachusetts uh, did the first uh, catalog of a famous Puritan family. Um, and. Uh, you know, just leveraging all these people who, who enjoy cataloging, who enjoy exposing the world of books as they've, it's never been exposed before. Um, and then when you get it all together, uh, you can see, you know, I share 57 books with, with Jefferson. And I share uh, 35 books with C.S. Lewis. And I can see the books they share together. Um, and uh, so all this stuff that library thing people are doing, um, you know, it, it goes in ascending, uh, in ascending uh, stairway or, or ladder, uh, where at the bottom you're doing it just for yourself, and the stuff, and you know, as you ascend, the stuff that you're doing for yourself starts to become helpful to other people, and at the very top, you know, there are I don't want to exaggerate, but you know, a couple hundred people who spend a lot of time on library thing, helping other people out, working on projects like this. You know, people whose love of books previously might not have been fully expressed. Um, so that's, um, oh, I did it in 26 minutes. I'm very impressed with myself. That's, uh, that's library thing in a nutshell. Um, Michael, I, I, I turn it back over to you. Great. Thanks, Tim. Um, I've got some questions that I kind of pre-planned for Tim. Uh, we've got some questions that have already come in, and I'll, I'll uh, ask Tim of those. And so if you've got any others... Um, feel free to either type them into the, the Q&A 
uh, or uh, raise your hand if you want to ask uh, via audio, and we'll do our best to try to pull that off. Um, but to, to um, one question that came through from the audience to which I will answer, because I have a feeling Tim won't know the answer to this question. Um, <laughs> when he was on the Star Wars page, somebody was uh, noticing the, the BBY on, on something. Um, and unfortunately, the that? I do know the answer to that. Before the Battle um, of Yavin, isn't it? Yes. Ah, he knows All it right, too. Too. <laughs> Yeah, before the Battle of Yavin, that's the, 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 uh, the battle at the end of the first Star Wars movie. Uh, to which then the timeline is established as before or after. So I just think I uh, made myself into one of those 3 a.m. in your underwear guys. But anyways. <laughs> Nobody wants to. Uh. <laughs> so that's a very big Star Wars geek yes. um, preference. Yes. That is my yeah. yeah. brain thing. Yep. Um, well, members have organized these things in, in this order, which you would never know if you weren't, you know, if you weren't one of those people. Right. Um, and then the other question that has already come in, Tim, is you, you threw out a term called a tag mash at one point, and someone was willing if you could maybe uh, uh, fill us in a little more what you meant by that, maybe show us an example. If I might, th might throw out a question for myself. I want to briefly show um, uh, library thing for libraries, too, which I totally forgot about. Oh, oh sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, showing uh, yeah, so the idea of a tag mash is simply to take a bunch of tags and put them together. So, um, uh, you know, how many books are there that, that are both zombies and romance? Um, well, uh, a fair number, actually. Um, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies gets number one. Uh, but, you know, it's great for other things, too. You know, you've got uh, Cooking Indian, you know. So it's taking two tags and doing something like a Venn diagram of them. And it was one of those things that, that we didn't do until we had millions of tags. But with 63 million tags, the, the data is just so rich that you can do, you know, really quite complicated things. You know, chiclet that takes place in Greece, you know, um, there's actually a fair amount of it. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's something that actually Library Thing invented. I haven't seen any other site do it quite the same way. Um, I should also mention one thing here about tags. You probably saw some of this that uh, Chiclet includes these variants. Um, another good example would be WW2, you know, World War II, includes the variants World War II spelled out in WW2 and these Weiser Velt Creek and all these other things. Library Thing members, you know, performs something, um, something like authority control on tags. Um, and they also do it on authors and um, uh, and, and works as well. The whole bibliographic system is, is, is available to people to change, and uh, although you might think they all go crazy, uh, they don't. They produce something pretty good. So, you know, Anne Frank is a number of different names, but, you know, the Diary of a Young Girl, all the various editions have been combined together by Library Thing members. There's over 244 covers. All of that was done by Library Thing members, in part, to help each other, and in part because when you combine your obscure edition of the Diary of a Young Girl with with the larger work, then you gain friends and connections. So, so anyway, can uh, can I do quickly um, library thing for libraries? Go ahead. Yeah. So um, I got the debug turned on here, but basically, library thing for libraries uh, takes features from library thing features and data, and it puts them inside of a library catalog. So this, this is the High Plains Library in Colorado, I think. And it's got features from library thing, like a tag cloud here. Let's blow this up. It's got a tag cloud here on the left. And when I click on one of these, I find, oops, I, did, uh, I, I find uh, all the books that are about vampires within uh, the, the High Plains Library. Right, it's open, sorry. I've got everything turned on debug mode here, so it looks a little bit programmery. But anyway, the idea is that you see all the you see all the tag stuff that you would see on library thing. You got similar books, which is recommendations. You got other editions, so tying together all the editions of New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. Uh, you know, one of those things that just incredibly library catalogs tend not to do. Here's a reviews feature, so your your patrons can add their own reviews, and then library thing kicks in 400, 450,000 reviews of itself. And we just added this one, which I think is just good looking, um, which is showing uh, your library's books on a shelf. 
uh, as if they were sitting on a shelf, and it brings some of the some of the serendipity back into uh, the computer experience. You know, I can browse around this as if I were standing in front of the library rather than you know just searching, searching, searching. So anyway, it's a product that we sell. It works with basically every OPAC. We've got a list of uh, 200 odd somewhere. We have a list of 200 odd libraries that uh, are currently using it. And um, uh, uh, yeah, so yeah. Do you have any more questions? Um, and, and the library thing for libraries, is that a free service? <laughs> no, it's not a free service. No, it is a pay service. I'm just going to see here in Nebraska. Okay. Nebraska. The University of Nebraska is currently using our, our library thing for libraries. Oh, so nice. they, uh, they're only using tags, but uh, if you go to their catalog, you can check it out, or go to any of the others listed on our wiki, and, uh, and you can see it. Uh, it is not free. It costs real money. Basically, every single page of your OPAC is enhanced, and every single page is hitting us for information, so uh, it's, it's not at all cheap for us to deliver it. But um, you know, compared to upgrading to a next-generation catalog, um, it's you know much much cheaper. And, you know, in case anybody in the audience couldn't tell, I, I knew the answer to that question. <laughs> um, another audience question: um, Is there any staff doing anything to any of this data? I mean, I know like you massage your own data because your own collection is in here, but is there, there is there is it all done by the members? Is there any staff that is participating in maybe cleaning up the data or, or things like that? Correcting or proofing that kind of thing, editing. Yeah, no, pr pretty much the members do it. I mean, there are um, there are some layers to it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll show you here the, the helpers log, which shows you the stuff that people have been doing to, to help us in the last hour. Um, you know, people have been doing, well, there isn't that much, but people have been doing, you know, stuff all day, uh, helping us, combining works, changing stuff. In a very small number of cases, um, we require a certain amount of voting. When you want to combine a tag, you've got to get a majority of, of a strong majority, a super majority of people to agree, because it just causes havoc if tags are being combined and uncombined all the time. But you know, we we use you know goodwill as the first stop. The second stop is you know checks and balances so that people can't do things crazy with other people people agreeing. Uh, you know everything is reversible, so uh, even if someone makes a mistake, it can be reversed rather quickly. And then very, very occasionally someone will, will complain about something that needs to be fixed by staff, but, you know, not very frequently. It, you know, it I is up saying that it, really a, a lot of the users are actually librarians, so. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it really is a member-driven and created um, create, uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, the core right. is coming from libraries and from Amazon. Um, and why you know we should never we should never downplay that or, or you know not speak of that but that's really where the, the the best value comes. But members add a lot of stuff on top. That's true. So it's kind of a mashup. It's kind of a mashup of the um, um, the official. I think what we're asked the, the person was concerned about is where did this like the so to speak mark record type information? Well, it comes from places like Library of Congress, places like other libraries. So that is the the good stuff. And then all the extra content added by the users is the great stuff like who would like this book, what is it about, you know, the things that when you have someone comes in and wants a reader's advisory type thing, that's the cool extra stuff that's put in there by the users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really, a, um, you know, it's, it's, it's neither OCLC nor Wikipedia. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. the marriage of the two in a certain sense. Uh, you know, and I, I, uh, I, I am not a, an extremist about uh, user-contributed data, and I obviously am not an extremist about you know, authoritative data. I think there are some things that, that it really works for and some things that, that, that user-contributed data doesn't work for. Uh, to give you an example, we, we mounted a, a rather big effort to create a replacement for Dewey. We called it the, uh, the, the Open Shelves Classification. And if there is one thing that is really hard to develop uh, in a group, it's a classification system. Um, it was just it was just one fight after another, and uh, you know some some you know, it was fun to try, but some some things don't work. You know some things you really need a, an authority for, um, but you know 
When it comes to the definition of thriller, I, I, I think it's a lot better to ask a thousand people than it is to have you know one librarian who may or may not be an expert in, in thrillers to decide. Mm -hmm. Um, we have another question from the audience. We, we have one person who I believe from our sign-in sheet is currently in Massachusetts, but she says she will be heading back to Brazil. Um, she's specifically asking about Portuguese, but, but is, it, is library thing currently or planning to be available, the interface itself in other languages? Yeah, no, library thing is, is currently available in more than a dozen languages. Uh, um, I can't remember whether this is Brazilian Portuguese or, or Portuguese Portuguese. T2 maybe, ER, I can't remember. Um, anyway, so we have it in Portuguese. We've been very successful in a couple of languages. Um, yeah, so here's one version of Portuguese. Our most successful sites are Holland, uh, Denmark, other Scandinavian countries. But, um, and then my, my favorite one is, is Catalan, the language of um, Catalonia in Spain. Um, these are smaller than LibraryThing.com, but we've got some serious uptake in a couple of countries. And uh, again, all of the translation is done by members. And uh, you know, it's significant that LibraryThing is the only service service that that uses a lot of different data. You know, the the, the sites you may have heard of besides LibraryThing would be Goodreads and Shelfari, and they use nothing but Amazon data, and they don't let you edit your data. And if it's not available from Amazon, you know, you, you got to type it all in yourself, or else, or maybe it's not available at all. And uh, so we really want to be kind of a world solution and a solution that respects the quality of uh, of, of, of data. Okay, great. Um, I, I had a question which I've never asked you before, and you know, you you are a for-profit company, so if I'm if I if you don't want to tell me too many details, I understand. But to get a little geeky and technical for a moment. What, what's under the hood of all this? What, 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 what's the hardware and software involved? Oh, I thought you were going to make, I thought you were going to ask how we made money. <laughs> oh, nah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, library thing is, is you know, it, it started with me personally growing pretty, pretty rapidly and organically. Uh, library thing would never have been possible without open source software. You know, we, we have Apache and Linux underneath. PHP, MySQL, uh, a lot of the Mark parsing code is in Python, uh, Memcached. Uh, you know, I've just listed ten projects that are that are open source projects. Um, PHP is the core programming technology. Uh, MySQL is the core database technology. Uh, and you know, we we I think we have like ten servers now, but they're you know they're commodity servers. It it, it really is a testimony to you know, to the power of Moore's law, the idea that every year computers get, you know, basically twice as fast. This is, this is not actually officially released, but I'll show it to you. We have this thing here called Overcat, and this is a search. Um, this is a search of, of 35 million library records, um, which makes it, which, which we have uh, stored, which makes it the largest uh, bibliographic data source outside of OCLC. Um, by by a considerable magnitude, uh, and it's it's called from from public re records that uh, Open Library has produced and others, as well as records that Library Thing has gathered over the years. Um, we have zero intention of monetizing it in any way or selling it. Uh, we never sell library data, uh, and we never will. But um, you know, on our ten servers, with everything else we do, we manage to do a search that is almost as comprehensive as OCLC's. And is pretty damn fast. That's pretty amazing, you know, because library thing, library things annual budget is a third of what the president of OCLC, um, no, no, half of what the president of OCLC makes every year. So, uh, Krista, you're still employed by OCLC, aren't you? Well, I am not actually. Oh, you're not. Okay, good. All right. No, well, anyway. we're no longer OCLC connected at all since last summer. So. Excellent. Okay. Well, anyway, so I just. It's amazing how much can be done now. You know, we've got 10 commodity boxes and we're not that smart programmers and we still manage to do some stuff that's, that's pretty impressive in terms of, of, of scale. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, another question from the audience um, and they're specifically kind of asking about DVDs, but what, what about cataloging other material other than books? Other formats. Other formats. Yeah. Sort yeah. of thing. Um, well, uh, 
I think it really it really spreads out from the book. Uh, audiobooks are very easy to catalog. They're you know very similar. Uh, we certainly have people cataloging DVDs and CDs. Um, the data model is different enough that we don't encourage it. Uh, you know, it's um, it's just a different data model, and this is true. This is true in, in the Amazon data. It's also true in Mark. You know, a, 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 a Mark record for a piece of sheet music or for a CD. You know, it's just it's just quite different from from a book. The library thing is really set up for books, but uh, there are certainly people who catalog that. There's you know, there's people who've cataloged, um, someone cataloged an entire library of perfumes. I don't know why, but they did it. You can do basically whatever you want, but, you know, the system is based around books, and the community is based around books. Uh, we may at some point do something, but if, if, you know, to extend that. But, you know, if we're going to extend it, we, we, we want to have a community that, that loves music, um, you know, separate, probably. So, so yeah. Um, and, and speaking of formats, and, and you know, I read your blog and whatnot, so maybe you know, I can guess some of this, but what, what sort of impact, if any, do you see of, of e-books on, say, library thing, uh, your service as opposed to you know, books in general? Well, that's a very interesting question. Um, you know, I think library thing, just to give you some context, you know, there, there is this universe of services out there now, and library thing was the first. Um, you know, I invented this idea, and, and, you know, that and three bucks will get me a cup of coffee. Um, but there are, you know, a lot of services now that do similar things, like Goodreads, like Shofari. There's some Facebook ones, too. Library thing is definitely the one for more people who are more scrupulous about their data. The people tend to be older, uh, more intellectual, uh, more interested in interests than they, than they necessarily are in, in friends. Um, I would say because of that, library thing has seen less impact from ebooks than you might think. Uh, generally speaking, if you mention ebooks on library thing, uh, someone will will practically shout you down. <laughs> so you know, there certainly are people cataloging ebooks on library thing. We uh, we're working on a project to make it much much easier to to bring your stuff in and out from from Kindles and iPads. Uh, but um, you know, overall, I'm not seeing a lot of it. Um, you know. Just to give you, you know, my experience, I, I have both an iPad and a, and a Kindle, and I, uh, I don't use either for reading. So, okay. down the road, I mean, it's clearly going to be big. The, 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 you know, there are going to be devices now which, which are social ebook devices. Uh, Copia is coming out with one. I think there'll be some others. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I, I worry. You know, the Amazon recently exposed this feature where you could see the most highlighted passages that people were doing. Um, and all of a sudden, millions of people who bought the Kindle realized that Amazon was aggregating the passages that they were highlighting and showing them without their permission. Um, I'm, I'm very much in favor of people sharing things, but I think there's a very strong tendency in the commercial world, be it Facebook or Amazon, to, to rig it so that you're, you're always sharing. Uh, in a way that I think is is harmful to to, to you and to, to book culture too. And and that segues into one of my other questions. Um, I I see you're starting to add integration into Facebook in library thing, and and as probably most of our listeners know, Facebook has gotten some press <laughs> lately about some privacy issues. Um, how is this feature working? You know what what is library thing doing with Facebook? And how are you potentially addressing the privacy concerns that, that Facebook has raised in the last couple of weeks? We believe very deeply in integration of a certain sort. You know, here's a book. This is a recent book. Library Thing has a page where it'll tell you all of the places you can buy it, buy ebooks, uh, versions, uh, audible versions, uh, um, um, audiobooks. There's a price comparison uh, part here. We have this wonderful, wonderful thing where it shows you the local bookstores that have the book. Uh, nobody else has done this. It involves a lot of really, really interesting scraping and, and beta feeds. So here or down here is, is we integrate with 12 different swap sites. I believe passionately in integrating the web and hooking the web together, um, and Library Thing does that. I don't like ways of hooking the web together that strongly prejudice one site over another. Um, 
We haven't added the like it buttons, those, those buttons you're supposed to put all over the web uh, now with Facebook that say you like something. Um, uh, we, we do have Facebook integration because members want it. Um, and it is, it's pretty, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to, to publish to your feed a review that you've written on library thing. Um, you know, you can, you can count me in the rank of, of skeptics, generally speaking, uh, when it comes to, to online privacy and, and to sharing. Uh, so yeah, so I'm logging into my Facebook and showing you a review that I just posted. There it is. So you can post a review to library thing like that, excuse me, to Facebook like that, and, and then your friends can jump to it. Uh, we also have Twitter integration. It's now broken, but it'll be back in a day or two. And, uh, you know, there's lots of cool stuff we can do integrating with the world, but, um, yeah, I'm a little bit wary of some of it. Great. Um, a, another project that I've seen you do periodically, and if I got the term wrong, please cor correct me, but uh, sort of a, a flash mob cataloging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can, can you um, explain that a little bit? I love those. <laughs> yeah, so we're basically we, we, we I'm going to Google it here. The, um, the idea of flash mob cataloging is somebody announces that they have a collection which needs to be cataloged, and um, you know it can be all kinds of things. I give two examples here, um, but we, uh, oops, yeah. Uh, the idea is so somebody announces they have a collection that needs to be cataloged, and we show up and catalog it. And we we might be just the members of the community. I've been involved in maybe. A half, a half to a third of them, but uh, they've taken place all over the country. Um, many of them have not involved any, you know, library thing staff at all. Here's a, here's a Rhode Island uh, Audubon Society that we showed up with about 20 people, cataloged a whole Audubon Society in, in a day. Here's a church that we did in, in Massachusetts where uh, we cataloged it. Um, you know, more and more I'm seeing around me these institutional collections. You know, library thing is fundamentally for people, but. Uh, Within half a mile of me, there are two churches that have used library thing to catalog their collections, neither of which were, were inspired by me. There's a, an, an Irish Heritage Center that's cataloged their collection. And uh, one way or another, it's, it's a great activity to get together on a, on a weekend and, uh, and get a bunch of people to catalog books together. Uh, and library thing, you know, as I say, is a community that, that if you want to do that, um, we'll, we'll, we'll probably find you some people who want to do that too. And this is not something that we're talking about as a pay service. This is people out of the goodness of their heart just showing up and helping these little independent type places that need it. Yeah, no, it's just it's just showing up. I mean, this this picture here is like, I guess there I am, and there's two other employees. But most of these people are, are just uh, uh, people who love library thing, or, or some of them are parishioners at the church. Um, I have to say, the first church we ever did, we thought we were helping out this poor bedraggled church, and it turned out to be the richest Episcopal church in Massachusetts. But um, but uh, they uh, they needed our help anyway, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, there's library thing has a lot of this. We, we've also done flash mobs just on the site where we'll we'll take a library and we'll do it in one day. So we we did the uh, the John F. Kennedy 1963 uh, uh, White House Library, which was published in a limited edition, and we just took a day and we just put the whole thing up. Um, uh, so it, there's lots of different ways that library thing members are are helping each other out and doing cool book stuff. I think this is one of the coolest things that you guys do. Just when people just come out of and just do this and yeah. Yeah. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Yeah, I'm waiting <laughs> for one to be like in Nebraska or something. Yeah. And we can click on yeah. Um okay. Go ahead. You guys have churches and the Islamic <laughs> yes. and everything else. So. Yeah, we just need somebody else to organize it, I think. <laughs> Um, okay, here's a question kind of out of left field, because I know you're, you're constantly listening to, to your members and getting suggestions from them on, on you know, how libraries things should change or, or what features should be added. What, what's maybe the, the oddest request you've gotten from somebody that, that either you, you ended up implementing because you just had never would have thought about it in a million years or said, that is so crazy, we're never going to do that? <laughs> Yeah, so, so this was a suggestion actually of my, my best friend, um, which he said as a joke, but I actually did. And that is, um, you're all familiar with the idea of if you like this book, you're going to like that book. Um, well, the logic of that algorithm is, is very simple. If you flip it on its head, you get, if you like this book, you're going to hate that book. 
and it's equally equally valid statistically. So here's uh, the dangerous book for boys. If you like that book, you will not like uh, Jennifer Weiner's Good and Bad or the erotic fantasy Cruciel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey. Um, I don't know what purpose this serves, but it's kind of fun. Um, I have some of my favorite ones over on the right here, like uh, Opposition Between Immanuel Kant's Critique of Pure Reason and Shopaholic. Um, so, uh, you know, Library Thing loves to do sort of fun, weird, cool things with, with data, and showing you the books you should never, ever read is, is a good example of that. Plus, again, no, Amazon would never do it. Um, but generally speaking, you know, Library Thing is a, is a very, you know, I'm going to click on my post here, you know, there's all these posts uh, trying trying to improve the site, telling me what's broken. Um, Library Thing is a very open community. I, I take, um, you know, we all take uh, a lot of joy in, 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 you know, doing what members think is, think is cool. That was a perfect answer because I was going to have you talk about the unsuggester. I, I, I wasn't even trying to back you into it because um, <laughs> I, I love showing that feature when, when I get a chance to show Library Thing. You know, yeah. the, the, one, the, feature that my, the feature that my friend actually suggested was if you're going to show the people who are most like you, you should have a feature to show your nemesis, right? But we haven't done that because I think people might be a little bit annoyed um, by having library thing pick out, their, pick out their enemy or something. Well, yeah, it might be you and me over Star Wars books. But, um, <laughs> I, well, and I like to say, you know, so reader's advisory, I absolutely hated this book. What should I read next? I mean, you know, that's, it, it, that's it's got right. possibilities. I, it might be a little extreme, but, you know, it's got members, possibilities. The, the cool thing to do with it is actually simply to expand yourself. We, we had members saying, let's all read our opposites. You, you can get the unsuggested book, book by book, but you can also get it for you personally. So, like, let's see what my current unsuggestor is, actually. I'm sure it's, like, knitting. Knitting is what I tend to get. Knitting or certain sorts of religion, let's say. Um, but, you know, the idea is, you know, maybe, maybe I should read that knitting book. Maybe I'd be a better person if I could understand the people who like knitting books. Um, I haven't actually done it, but, but maybe I would be. It's actually interesting if you read a lot of uh, um, politics and social stuff, and, you know, you, you really want to read the other side of something. Yeah, and, you know, I think that... Library thing, you know, in general, library thing creates connections among likes, right? You know, there's this, this, um, there's this phenomenon where if you go onto the site and you're, let's say you're an evangelical, or let's say you only love theater books or whatever, you get this queer sense that the whole site is about you because the site is kind of always adjusting its content based upon you. Um, but there are ways to get outside of that. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that... Uh, uh, What's called homophily, you know, uh, hanging out with people who are like you, is is you know is half of the story, and the other half is is uh, is hanging out with people who are different. There you go. I should absolutely not read jo Jody Picot's My Sister's Keeper, and I can tell you that I will not. You have any more questions? Gore Vidal on that list. I mean, <laughs> it might not be too bad. Um, yeah, I have one more question, and and I forgot to preload a photo just for proof, but and and. Uh, you're going to have to explain yourself on this one. Um, what's with the rhino? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, well, you know, we just have a weird attitude towards the library. The library thing shows up at all conferences with rhinos, um, giant inflatable rhinos. Um, it came about because um, we didn't have anything to bring to the conference, um, and the rules are very explicit about not bringing furniture. You know, it, it has to be something that you can physically carry in by yourself or the unions get involved. So... Uh, we started filling our booths with rhinos just to uh, fill up the space, and uh, that's it. <laughs> you know, in general, I want library thing to be kind of the funny, the funny weird site, and uh, uh, I think that's you know that's one example of it. Well, well, you are in charge, so you know, mission accomplished. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we we will for everybody who who doesn't want to go hunting, we'll to the the bookmarks list for this week. We will uh, we will post a, a photo. of it's okay. I have a very short video videos of us doing rhino tossing because we, we oh. <laughs> yes, there's rhino tossing. I I, I I was there sort of fun. I have a good picture from my Flickr stream of you and your rhino Tim, so I'll make sure that everybody gets uh gets right. see that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to say 
I want to say that, uh, that, that people should feel free to follow up with me with questions if they want to. Tim at librarything.com, very easy to remember. Um, but thank you so much for inviting me on today. Oh, you're welcome, Tim, and, and, and thanks for uh, uh, taking, taking some time out of your, your day. Uh, we'll do one last check here. To see we're, we're kind of running a little out of time, uh, see if there's any questions waiting in the queue here. Um, and and there, there was one question about the cost uh, differences between libraries and individuals, to which I'll just quickly answer, uh, significant. <laughs> um, and uh, I... I Tim, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but library things for libraries, it really is kind of a library by library quote on the price, right? It's it is. And, I mean, library thing for libraries enhances your OPAC in a, in a very serious way. You know, the, the minimum is usually $1,000. Uh, so it's a significant product, but it adds a lot of value to you and it, you know, prevents you from having to go out and buy, um, you know, uh, something else. Um, the other thing that, that's interesting about it is that there are all these, there are all these, um, Things now, like like Encore, would be one example where where vendors have decided that tags and other social stuff is good, so they just kind of cram it into their software. And I think those things are mostly just terrible. You know, the idea of Encore is that um, that if you have tagging, you're done. But tagging doesn't work if there's only five tags, if there's only ten tags. In fact, you know, having ten tags on a book is worthless. You might as well forget them. You need hundreds or thousands of tags, and you know what library thing provides. Library thing for libraries provides is, is not so much the feature because people make features, but the enormous uh, society and, and pool of data that stands behind the feature, um, uh, which I think is you know the essence of social software is not the software; it's it, it's the social. Anyway. We're not seeing any other uh, questions in the queue, so Tim, I just want to say uh, thanks again. This this was great. We we kind of told Tim uh, we wanted a half hour out of him, and you know we've taken the whole hour. But I, I've learned some things about library thing, and I've been a member for several years now. Yes, so um, have I. Now I want to go and spend a lot of time playing with some of these things that you these little. I don't know what you call them, features, fun mm -hmm. things, things you can do. <laughs> yeah, and I'll also say I use it a lot. All, all of my new books, I, I get them home. I'm, I'm, you know, completely nuts. I put dust jacket covers on all my hardcovers, but I also add them to library thing. And if for no other reason than on my phone while I'm in the bookstore, I can go, do I already own this? Mm -hmm. And I can pull up my library thing catalog, <laughs> and it will tell me whether or not I already own it. So, I mean, that that's the... That was worth every penny for me right there. <laughs> Let me reveal one more secret, which is that Library Thing does cost $10 or $25 for a lifetime account. When you actually go to pay, you guys probably don't know this, but when you go to pay, it says, never mind, pay us whatever you want. Um, so you can actually pay us as little as a dollar, uh, but we get, on average, more than we ask for. So uh, just another way that we do something a little bit different, and I think uh, I'll help uh, uh, in a cool way. I actually did notice that when I did my lifetime one, that it said it also had the option of that. And also, I think that one, or a higher suggested one, had a little comment in it that says, thanks, Mom. Yes. <laughs> Which I <don't> try. <laughs> what did you? And what did you pay? Oh, good. I think I did this. I can look it up. <laughs> I paid 25 bucks. Yes, I did I, the I, suggested I, for lifetime, whatever that was, yeah. So. But I've also purchased a cute cat, so I've given more... <laughs> There you go. There you go. All right. Um, thanks again, Tim. Uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna take. Go ahead. I'll see anyone at ALA who's there. Bye. Yep. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Tim. We're gonna take uh, Tim uh, uh, the uh, control back here. Um, as usual, I did plan sort of um, some other things to talk about, but our hour is is pretty much up. Um, I do want to say that we will have. Uh, Bookmarks up for library thing. A photo of Tim and his rhino, and oh, and we can actually we can show you that real quick. No, no. Oh, oh God, Tim, oh, Tim, I need to make you a presenter first. Okay, maybe. No. Okay, we're we're gonna provide a link to it. We're having a little uh, uh, technical issues here. I'm, um, we will have booked up. Um, there's uh, some, some other issues that you may be interested in. Those, those links will go with the recording. I'm just showing them here uh, real quick. Some of these I might save for next month. I uh, haven't decided who uh, we're going to talk to next month. Although, 
I do have an idea for next month. Uh, I don't know how many of you are aware of One Book, One Twitter going on right now. Um, I have been in contact with the guy who is running that, and we might be able to get him for an interview next, uh, next month. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted on that as soon as we know one way or another. So, Christy, you want to wrap this up? She's trying one more thing. Oh, okay, there's a picture of Tim and Ryan. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Tim, for uh, speaking with us today. I think it was great that we had that very awesome long introduction to what you're doing. There's Tim and his Rhino. Um, and I hope you join us next week when it will be Michael again talking about participating in the Creative Commons next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time at your local computer. Yep. Thank you very much, and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye.